everyone out there in Facebook and, and digital land, welcome, welcome, welcome to another amazing event with some amazing guys. I want to welcome to the U.S. Military Veteran Suicide Prevention page, and it's all about making ourselves better, connecting with other people, hearing other people's stories, and making sure that we can take something from someone and apply it to our own lives. Today we have uh, Mr. Gomez and Mr. Travis Strong, <laughs> along with uh, your founder, your man, the amazing <laughs> Mr. Rob Layson. And of course, I'm Sensei Dave Armstrong of Unlimited Potential Network, all things amazing and positive in life. So I wanna dig deep into some stories today, you guys. We had some amazing people with us um some amazing stories and travis we're going to start with you for obvious reasons brother you uh lost your legs in combat yes and so i want to talk about that man and more than just the the fact that you lost your legs i want to talk about how you turn that around and and the cycle that you went through or several cycles that you went through getting to the point where you've accepted and you're you're just crushing life now but it wasn't it wasn't overnight right no, you did, not you at didn't all. Get up without legs and say yes i'm gonna crush life let's do it yeah. right yeah it was the case <laughs> it was the, totally but no, totally, but no yeah. that's case. tell me about that brother um, well i mean <laughs> i lost my legs back in two, 2006 so it's been quite quite a while now but uh i mean when i, I mean when i was first injured i went through probably every emotion that you can think of from anger to being depressed to just, just you know why why did this hap happen to me i mean all the emo everything everything can think of think of i went through and um it, it lasted a good couple years at least um but there there came a time where it was probably maybe about three or four years after i was injured and feeling sorry for myself and not going to do with my with my life that I kind of waste to east to either I either see either either I'm going to just die the way that I am or I'm going to try and live the best life that I can. So I Amen. chose to live the best life that I can, um, Amen, and I started brother. doing that. So that's kind of the choice that I made. You made a choice, but it wasn't like you woke up and said, "Okay, I, I, I'm just going to make a choice." Was it um, necessarily necessarily? I just woke up. I mean, it was it was a gradual process. Um, but I've always been I've always been the kind of person that that, that fights. I've, I've always been the kind of person that will push my myself to my limits. And mm. uh, I wasn't, you know, I, you know, I was living in my own be for a long for a long, and and that's not me. So. I really had to look at my plan and evaluate them and, and um, just try and use what I have what I have now to the best that I can and and that's when I started getting into back into fitness. That's when I started getting into doing a lot of the kind of extreme stuff that I do. Um, um, while doing that, I noticed that a lot of people watch me and follow me and see what I'm doing, and in turn, it gives, it gives them hope. They see me if a legless guy can do a lot of this stuff that, you know, you know, going, then going, then what's their excuse. So mm. once I started to see impact, the impact of the things that I've have been doing, we're doing to other people. It just kind of just drove me and like pushed me. So to do it more. So you, you use that, you use that experience of knowing that you were positively impacting people and you said, man, you know what? I want to I want to really continue to do this. I want to thrive at this. I want you form some sort of intrinsic motivation to just keep going, keep doing that, keep spreading the positivity and um, to let people know, like, there's hope. Yes, exactly. Amen, brother. Amen. Yeah. yeah. We're going to come back. We're going to come back to you for obvious reasons, Travis. I want to I want to hear a little more about your story. <laughs> but uh, Gomez, right? Oh. You go by Gomez. You said just Gomez. You lost your first name. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Roger that. Talk to me about yourself, brother. Um, well, 
Travis, I mean, by all means, you, Bud, you're, you're, you are an inspiration. I want to I want to thank you for what you do. Uh, and, and you're right, you, you, are, you are an inspiration. Um, we were talking a little bit earlier about some of our injuries that we have, and and, uh, and I'm classified as a spinal cord injury veteran, so uh, I get a lot of these magazines, and you see individuals in wheelchairs or amputees, and they're out there doing stuff. And so I got out of no two, so it's been a while since I got out of the military, and uh, I'm a non-combat vet, but I got injured uh, while training. And uh, I think that's been one of the biggest struggles for me is being that uh, I, w I was infantry, just like my brother Travis here. Uh, our job is to go fight wars. Our job is to go out there and face evil, uh, you know, in that darkness and come to time when I needed to go. I, I couldn't go because of my injuries. And for me, it ended up being something like, well, if I didn't go, that means somebody else had to go to my place. And, and uh, I said, when I got home, uh, didn't think I was nothing special, just did my four years, got out, um, started going to the VA, found out about my injuries, and uh, and again, I was in that same boat where I, I was depressed in the eyes of, I'm no longer that person I used to be, I'm not able to do what I could do anymore, I'm limited, and, uh, and then you start asking yourself, well, what am I good for? You know, well, what, what can I do? Am I just, just going to sit here until the day that comes my day for me to go and uh, you know, uh, for me, honestly, I, I felt it would have been, for me, it would feel better if I would have gone to combat, something happened to me there, and then I would have known that it would have been an honorable, I guess, uh, passing, but I've just come to realize that I have a new mission, you know, you have to first accept the, the fact that, you know, whether you're still here, whether you didn't go to combat, you know, there's a reason for that, and we have to find that reason and that purpose, and uh, push forward, and, uh, and and uh and adapt and overcome i mean that's what we're trained to do so right on brother uh, right in. i agree i agree 100 percent um so so you didn't go to combat but you you're you're you suffered an injury uh during training and this injury and i can understand what the injury is and i just shared with you guys what my my bionic spine looks like now and um I know that there's a there's a point where you just go through depression. You just do, it, and and it it's probably ninety nine percent of people that will go, why me? Like why can't I just be? Normal? Why can't I just like have a normal damn life? Like I don't need to deal with this. I I prefer not to. Right? I prefer to not be in pain. I prefer to just lead a normal life. And Travis, you went through that. I'm sure. How long oh, yeah. did you go through that, and what what jolted you out? Like, what at what point did you say, "Screw it, I gotta, I gotta go be, I gotta live life." Yeah, yeah. Um, again, that was a long process. Um, a good like probably five years, five years, um, mm. just trying to deal with a lot of a lot of the, like you said, like the why did this happen to me type thing. Like honestly, like I did. did and fighting and fighting and everything else to come back possibly dead, not to come back half a, a person. Um, so, you know, here I am for one dealing with the whole losing everything in an instant thing. Cause I mean, I was blown up and as soon as I was blown, I mean, my, I mean, my career was gone and I was out of country. I think, like, I think three, three days. So and I knew, and I knew everything that I worked for and that, and that I was, was, was gone in an instant. Um, all that I served that I served with, um, it was all gone. So to lose that kind of life port, port, everything, and then just to be thrown back into civilian world to be into now, into now, how am I going to deal with, with having no, no legs? What's my life going to look like? It was hard. It was very, very hard. And, um, and, um, I mean, I mean, it took a good, like I said, about four or five, um, um to deal with all of those emotions and everything. Finally, go find what, what? These these are the cars that are dealt. Um, I'm gonna have to deal with them. I mean, I'm I'm am I'm a fighter. I want to live, and I, I'm not gonna die. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Bro, what, what do you have to say about that, man? I'm just I'm thankful to have Travis here with us today, man. It's it's a blessing, Travis, for you to uh, to make it home, man, and and oh, to you. be 
doing the things you're doing today because you, I know you came a long way, man. Uh, I've yeah. seen your videos, man, and, and the stuff you're doing. Uh, it's just, it's, it's amazing. It really is. Uh, the stuff you're doing in the gym. I mean, it, uh, it's really, really amazing what you're doing, man. Uh, and it's, it, it's a blessing. It's a blessing for you to, to be back and be safe and stuff. <laughs> Thank you. Thank yeah. you. It is. But you know what? I want to keep, keep going down that path, right? I'm pulling on something here. Travis, okay. did it always feel like a, a blessing? No, not at all. And there's still days to this. I mean, it's, there's still times to even up to now that, you know, I still struggle and it's still hard. And I, I still go, why me? You know, mm -hmm. and all the still still creep in my in my head, um, even to this day. So it's still a struggle and struggle. Um, it's not like I'm just like now, you know, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm perfect now. There's nothing wrong. Um, but I I try and cope well. I try and. I just try with it the best with it the best that I can. So, mm -hmm. yeah, that's that's kind of the point that I was trying to drive home is uh, to everyone that's listening to this that may be going through something, uh, may have lost everything, may be depressed, may be inside of their feelings and they can't get out. Uh, it is not an overnight process by any means, but you have to start the process of healing, of accepting, of moving on, whatever, whatever it is, it could be, it doesn't have to be a physical ailment, a physical injury. It could be emotional trauma that you've suffered. It could be PTSD. It could be shit that you've seen that you can't get over and you're going, I'm tired. I'm tired. I don't want to keep having these dreams. I don't want to keep waking up like this. I don't want to keep dot, dot, dot. And it's a matter of accepting what has happened and you can't control it. The only thing you can control is the future, but you have to accept it. The end, you have to accept it. And we're talking about, we're here talking about the 22 a day, 2022 a day, right? What does that mean? That means 20 to 22 people, veterans are killing themselves every single day. And what that tells us is they can't get to the point of accepting. They can't get to even seeing a future in front of them. And it's not, it's not going, the light isn't going to just appear through osmosis. It's, you have to, you have to burn that fucking fire. You got to light it up. You got to figure it out. You got to figure it out because you, you're worth it. Gomez, you're worth it, right? Yeah, I've, I've found I have been. I've, I've, I've you know, and, and like Travis says, how, helping others or showing others, being an inspiration to others uh, helps helps me. I'm sure like Travis says it helps him as well. Uh, letting others calling you or talking to you or letting you know that, you know, what, what we do inspires and motivates them keeps them here a little bit longer keeps us a little bit longer it lets us know that we do have that purpose we do have that mission and uh and you know i mean getting out there and helping others i mean it, it really does make a difference uh you know i got out in 02 i really i never even got back into the community until 09 it took about seven years for me oh, to wow. get involved into the community wow. and uh hey, hey. and i started by doing military funerals you know so uh and getting back in that, that military orientation, because we get out of the military and we're told, okay, you're no longer in the military no more. Stop thinking like that. It, it's not that easy. Mm. It, you know, it, you have a certain mindset. And I, I remember going to the VA and going to psych and and they, they tell me, you know, well, you got to get your mind. You got to, you know, you got to start thinking like you're not in the military. No more. I know, but the military is the right way to think. I go, I come out here. I come out here in the civilian world and look how everything is. And I don't want to be like that. You know, I, I like the training that, I, you know, we're trained for a purpose. You know, we, we, uh, we there, there's reasoning behind everything that we do. And, and it has to do with the greater good and not with uh, self-purpose. And so you come to, you know, in normal society, you know, it's about me, 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 you know, and, and for in the military, it's about the greater good. We're, we set aside our differences 
And in a, even if we don't like each other, even if we don't like what we're doing, we're doing it for the greater good for the mission. And and we don't have that out here. So it was a really hard struggle, but just surrounding myself with other military veterans made really made a difference. But mm -hmm. uh, And I, I surrounded myself, especially around military personnel for the longest time. Uh, and then uh, and then I started getting involved with uh, civilians. And uh, I learned this, so I, do, uh, I ride motorcycles across the country. And uh, on one of my rides uh, called Run for the Wall, I rode across the country next to this individual uh, for five days. It was halfway, it was already halfway across. And this individual, uh, we get to a stop and we hung out. We don't get much time because we're on the bikes all the time. And uh, he, was a, he was a shorter individual, a little stocky, had a little bit longer hair on the side. So I looked at him and I go, what were you, Air Force? And <laughs> <laughs> he looked <laughs> he looked at me. He, he looked at me and said, "No, I never served," and and that blew me. That blew me away. And I'm like, "Wait, wait, wait a minute." So you're telling me that you're taking ten days out of your life, your vacation time, your personal money, to ride across the country to honor our fallen heroes, mm -hmm. to welcome home our Vietnam veterans, to bring awareness <laughs> and thank all our veterans. And they're like, "Yeah, it's the least I can do." And to me, that blew me away, because it was like, there are still people out there that care. And you know, I used to use yeah. that term civilian all the time. I I, I f and hate civilians. I used to say that all the time, and uh, I realized <laughs> that, that there's a difference between civilians and patriotic Americans. You know, as you're mm. going through life and you're seeing stuff going on. You know, we're in the states, so you know, Travis is in Texas. I'm in New Mexico, but busy life going on. Everybody's in a rush and a hurry. Don't don't care what's going on, and it just. Uh, it helps to just take the time and, and, and see individuals and realize that there's still great America out there. You know, when you travel travel America on a motorcycle and you have strangers welcoming you, thanking you for your service and uh, treating you great, it, it, it was an eye-opener, you know. And so and it makes you realize that uh, America is going to be okay, you know. And uh, I really appreciate all those patriotic Americans out there that never served but still – uh, believe in that flag behind us, support our veterans that uh, that go out and defend, and uh, and just be good stewards in life. Just be a good person in life, you know. Treat each other equally and and help each other out every now and again. You know, nothing wrong with that. Yeah, I agree one hundred percent. One hundred percent, definitely. You know, I I uh, I served twenty four years in the Air Force, and and the other day I was feeling like, wow, the business world doesn't have the core values that the Air Force has. And, and a lot of the business world could really use it. Yeah. You know, integrity first, service before self, excellence in all we do. That's the Air Force core values. And I thought, man, if everyone had integrity and thought, <laughs> how can I help you before I help me? Yeah. I'm going to I'm going to get paid for my service, right? I'm going to get paid for whatever. But if I come at it, business, from a service before self attitude, it just makes it so much better. You know, and, and then be excellent, excellent at it. People lose this concept. Not good, right? Be excellent at what you do. And, in, and, and you know, you know, all of us have served in the military. The people that are not excellent at dot, dot, dot have to go back to training because you don't want your battle buddy. You don't want your battle buddy um, carrying a rifle that has a bullet in the chamber and doesn't know what the hell to do with it. Right? Right on. Right. 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 Yeah. So you have to be excellent. But a lot of the a lot of the corporate world doesn't get that. They they think mediocre is is okay. You know this 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 uh, eighty percent rule. Well, that twenty percent means one's in the chamber, maybe, or maybe maybe you don't have the safety on. Them. What does that yeah. mean? You know what's what's the twenty percent? What is what's the cost of that twenty percent? We don't we don't go to war. We don't go with, and it's not just war because everything we do in the military is training for war. Everything that we do that is what military is. So it can't be mediocre before we get to the field. But Dave, that's that's a two edge that's a two edge blade though too. Uh, uh, 
for myself, uh, and I'm going to try this, we're infantry, United States mm -hmm. Army. And uh, I, I always express this all the time. We're, we're arrogant bastards. We're, we, 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 we are the best. We believe we're the best. And we're trained that way because as soon as you believe that you're second best, you've already lost the battle. You know, and so, again, it goes back to our training. Our uniform has to be on key. Uh, our, our boots are the shiniest. Our berets are, are the shapest. They're, they look the best. And we look immaculate as far as, say, our uniform in our class A's. And it's they, they break that down in us so hard that, like, your uniform, if you're off by 16th of an inch, right? <laughs> and the people don't realize this, but, like, you know, a sixteenth of an inch is barely even noticeable, but if you have as much time in the world to make sure that your uniform is right and you don't take that much time to make sure that it's on key by that sixteenth of an inch, if you're in the battlefield and you're out by that sixteenth of an inch, what happened? You just shot your buddy in back of the head. Well that, that could you have mean, to be yeah, on key. Life or death. Yeah. That's why you know, we and, do what we do. That's why all you know. It doesn't matter on your uniform. Nobody, nobody gives a crap about the uniform in, in real practical uh, aspects, right? No, yeah. if, if it's off, it's off. Okay, nobody, nobody's measuring your uniform, but we train that way because we have to implement that way. The end, and and the cost of not is life. But what happens yeah. is, though, we we strive for that perfection, right? Yeah. But reality, there is no such thing as perfection. So sometimes we, like myself, I've set myself up for failure because I strive for this perfection or this to be on key. But like I said, mm. things happen in life. You know, Murphy's Law, right? You can have you can have a straight battle plan set up and ready to go do what you're supposed to do. But Murphy's Law <laughs> comes into play and something's going to come and, and it ain't going to work out the way you want it to. You know, but that's where we have to evaluate our situation. We have to act accordingly, adapt, and overcome. You know, but that's yeah. why I. It took right. me a while. To, it took me a while to realize that, like, because I, 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 and again, for me, I've learned so much on a motorcycle, and it, I, it was from a Navy gentleman that I learned this from. But uh, I broke down, like, every. I told him, like, I literally told this individual, a stranger, never knew who he was. I was in, at the Pentagon parking lot for a Rolling Thunder, and mm. I broke down, and I was like. You know, I wake up every day feeling like a failure, like, like mm -hmm. I, I, like I, I should be doing this or I should be there, but I'm not where I should be in life. And it, I, and sometimes I feel because I strive for that perfection. I should be the best. I am the best. I'm trained to be the best. I know I'm the best. There's nothing I can't do. Like if I put myself to it, I can get it done. And so I, I literally broke down to this stranger, and and this is a funny story. So he's an Navy man, and he told me. You know, do you know why we make our bed in the morning? And I'm pretty sure most of you guys have heard this before. You know, and there's an admiral yeah. that that made that pretty much did a commencement speech about this. <laughs> and if you have not oh. watched this, uh, Dave Armstrong, yeah, yeah. you need to watch this. But uh, oh yeah, I have. I have. Yeah, yeah. He's uh, <laughs> pretty much he tells you, you know, we're trained to make our bed perfect, and we can we we do it every day in basic training, nonstop. To the point that we can do this in our with our eyes closed, perfect without immaculate. You know, we know how to make our bed. That's for sure. <laughs> and ideally, if you make your bed every morning, it's the first thing that you can do that you know you've done right. And they go, you can leave the rest of the day. And after you can have a dirty, shitty day, and at the end of the day, you can come home to a perfectly well-made bed that you know you did. Hmm. You know, and yeah. it. it that didn't like really snap to my snap to. Right you just got to start our day doing something right, you know. And man, that 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 gentleman, I needed to hear those words. And again, a complete stranger out of nowhere turned my life in that aspect of it, where I was like, mm -hmm. you you see life. It just takes somebody to explain it in one different way, and you can just see things in a in a different avenue and aspect. And yeah, you know. Yeah. I, 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 you know, I, I say that we, we don't all vibe on the same frequency, but when you hear somebody that you do vibe on that frequency say something, that's that aha moment. And you go, whoa, all right. I get, I get that. I get why, I get why dot, dot, dot. You know, I talk to my clients about making their bed. I, you know, a lot of people, I, to us, it's just normal. I mean, especially after 
so long. You just this is what you do. <laughs> and people out there, that's not that's not normal. That's that, that they don't start their day off <laughs> making their bed, doing something that they're good at, right? And that letting that bleed into other aspects of your life. But I want to use I want to use that as a little bit of a segue because Rob, you got some trivia stuff. He Rob does did these these big oh yes yes boards and <laughs> trivia. And he wants to talk a little bit about some trivia with us. And then Travis, I'm going to come back to you, man, and talk about uh, talk about why you're so avidly working out. But this is going to be a great segue to that mental health <laughs> trivia. All right. All right, Rob. Okay. Mm-hmm. okay. <laughs> <laughs> Does getting rest help okay. you with your mental health? All right. So I want to see comments. I want to see comments in the chat box here. Does mental health help you or getting rest help you with your mental health? All right. So, Rob, what's the answer, brother? David says yes. Yeah. I know yes, for sure. Even though <laughs> I don't yes. sleep, I'm, I'm on about an hour of sleep so far. <laughs> <laughs> I think our sleep, sleep night, last night, a couple, at least. Uh, so, yeah, I, you know what? Obviously, it really is. <laughs> Sleep Obviously, does make yes, yes, but why? Why, Rob? Why does why does sleep and rest? Not even sleep. I, I want to take it further than <laughs> sleep. Rest. 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 That makes a difference. That makes a huge difference. I rest every morning. I have a, a ritual. Yeah, I get getting, getting sleep stretching and meditation. Yeah, you you got that's it. My, that's my ten minute. I I tune my brain out from the world. I don't have anything going on. I don't think. I don't have to do anything. I'm just there breathing and enjoying the moment. And that's rest. And we have so many, so many outlets for rest. I play video games. I got my Xbox or my PlayStation 5. I play video games. Travis, you you work out. That's your rest, right? Yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. Pretty much. Yep. (laughs) Yeah. So rep, yeah, I don't get REM sleep. Mark. How do you not get REM sleep? Huh. All right. What's the next one? Mr. Mr. Amazing Rob. Okay. What is the next? Next video? up. Next up. Next up. Uh, question two. Does getting exercise help with your mental health? <laughs> so Travis. Does exercise help with your mental health, sir? 100%, 100%, 100%. Yes, it does. Yeah. yeah, it releases endorphins. It makes you feel good. And if you can build that intrinsic value that, that like, this is, I love the gym. I love to do push-ups. I love to, whatever physical fitness thing, it just adds to the fact that you, you are going to be better off uh, by exercising. And so I'm going to use that as a segue, actually, Travis, to, man, you've done some amazing stuff for not having legs. I, I saw some videos and some photos of you, I mean, doing some stuff that, that people with legs don't do. Yeah, yeah. So I want definitely. you to talk about some of the events that you've done and what you've gotten out of them. Um, I, I, I've done things like up in, up in Colorado Springs. That's where I used to live. Um, they have these steps called the Manitou in, Incline. And it's basically steps that go up this mountain. And um, it's, it's pretty tough. It's 2,600 and some odd it. steps. And, yeah. yeah. And so um, I've done that about times now, just, hop, just hopped up it. Um, and then I've also hopped all the way up the top of Pikes Peak, too. So um, you know, that's that's there. You and, you hopped on the t- wait wait, oh, oh. brother. Oh. I've climbed Pikes Peak, and that's so I know it's a thirteener. So fourteen thousand feet, thousand feet, yeah, fourteen thousand one hundred feet. Yep. And and you and you hopped all the way up. Yes, man. Yep. And then come come. Uh, uh, 
see oh. June, July, August here. I'm going to team where we're going to be going be going up Mount Kilimanjaro. So that's the big th big thing. Popping up, popping up Mount Kilimanjaro. So, so. Ah, you're that's kidding awesome. me. Oh, that's awesome. Holy <laughs> that's great, crap. brother. I I'm I'm speechless. <laughs> I've Did done my speak. I know how hard that is. I couldn't yeah. even imagine Kilimanjaro. Yeah, I, yeah, see I, I am a little bit nervous because the peak was peak was it's about 12, 12 miles from the base to the top, and mm -hmm. uh, I only I only went up to the top. I drove I drove back down, but um, yeah. Kilimanjaro yeah. is going up and back down, and it's it's about forty miles round trip round trip. So it's it's going to be it's going to be hard it's gonna be hard, and that's yeah. a twenty thousand feet mountain there. So. Wow, brother! Wow, yeah, you should, you should be nervous that's a because it's a, that's a deal, long hike, brother. <laughs> yeah, I would have got up to halfway, halfway up there. I would have been like, "All right, time, time to go home." <laughs> <laughs> On the flight there, I'm like, "Yeah, I'm getting at the bottom." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, wow, Travis. Okay, that's so awesome. so you've done some ama I mean, amazing stuff. Amazing stuff. Even if you had both your legs, amazing stuff. You don't. Even <laughs> more amazing. Yeah. So, and, and, and I this didn't guy know Travis doing all of this without prosthetics. Yeah. No. Yep. Without prosthetics. So. It, isn't that isn't that hard on your legs? Is, does it does it hurt? Um, well, like I said, I bake, so I'm sitting. I'm sitting on my ass, and I'm just using my arms to just hop up the damn thing. So um, oh, okay. it hurts on the arms, like definitely, and the shoulders more yeah. so than anything else in the back and all that kind of stuff. So, wow, wow, and I'm sure there's so many people that are inspired by you they being able to. Do they it. don't call you Travis Strong for nothing. You're strong. <laughs> oh, yeah, you're, yeah. you're strong, brother. Yeah. Much respect, Travis. Much respect, man. Much. Yeah. Wow. I, I, yeah, I definitely yeah. salute you, brother. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> so, so you, you, I'm sure you've had a lot of people say, man, you're, you're an inspiration. Yeah. You, you inspired me. So, if you can leave words to anyone that's watching this of inspiration, what would they be? Um, um, well, you know, anything is possible. Um, as long as you put enough time and effort and you have that will, you can do anything that you want to do, regardless of what your sin is, is, I mean, um, and then one of the things I did, things I did about talk about, you were talking about, you were talking about earlier. One of the helps me, helps me too. What I think a lot of people don't, a lot of people, a lot of people don't do is talk about their, what happened to them. I think mm. that's, that's a huge thing with mental health. Um, it's just getting your story and about talking about it. Um, talking about the hard things, talking about the things that you don't want to talk about, because those are the things that eat you up inside. Those are the things that ulti ultimately drive people to commit suicide is not talking about those things and keeping it in. The more that you talk about stuff, the easier those situations be become in your own mind, and it helps you deal with them. Um, so that's just one of the things I wanted to say earlier. But Yeah. Yeah, talking about it, man. Get you know, seeking therapy, seeking a Amen, friend. Amen. Yeah. Those things are important, and there's no, there's these BS stigmas about uh, macho. You know, you know, I'm I'm a guy, or I, you know, I don't need all that crap. Doesn't mean anything. It's it's your life, right? And you deserve the best version of you. And knowing that. Go get the help that you need. Go talk to the people that you need to talk to. Draw inspiration from people like Travis that, you know, that are doing just amazing things. And to be able to do what you're doing, um, there's there's a, a physical aspect of it, but way more demanding is the mental aspect of it. I'm sure. Am I wrong? Nope. Yeah, well, we were talking I mean, about it's all here. Yep. yep. Yeah. It's all yeah. it's all here. I mean, whatever you you set your mind to, your body will will do. And I I try that. This is why I do why I do all the crazy stuff that I do to show people that that's how it works. You know what I mean? Like, you know, 
mind can mind can just push. Yeah, I know what you mean. And um, <clears throat> yeah. So so Mark has a really good question. He says, "Where do I start?" Gomez, you first, man. Where do you think somebody should start? Like, what do you do? That's a hard one. Uh, you know, I, I think for there's no there's no set course because I think everybody's story is different. Everybody uh, has has their own avenue that they have to face to hopefully get them to that right course. I mean, because what works for me isn't going to always work for someone else, you know, and it's, it's like the medication, you know, you can, I can tell one person, oh, yeah, I get this one pill from psych and it helps me out. And then he goes to psych to try to get it. It ain't, it ain't going to help him out. It, it may just work differently. Um, I mean, mm -hmm. the biggest thing is just think positive. I think that that has to be your, your ultimate goal. As soon as you start letting that negative thoughts overpower those positive or that hope and that faith, I think that's when you start losing it. You have, and, and, you know, I mean, I think you can maintain that by either just keeping yourself surrounded by good individuals, like he mm -hmm. says, uh, therapy, uh, just, you know, talking to a good friend of yours. I mean, you have to put, surround yourself around positive people. If you're around negative people, it's just going to make it worse for yourself as well. Yeah. 100%. 100%. I'll chime in a little bit. Mark, I think you have to start by accepting. You just have to go, this is the situation. This is, I'm depressed. I don't have my legs. I'm broke. I whatever, whatever the hell is after I, and you go, yeah, uh, this is my situation. And understanding that when you accept it, you can change it. Yeah. It's going to take action. It's going to take work. It's, it's not going right, to be right. easy, but you can change it. And if I look at somebody like Travis, uh, you know, I look at other people that are doing amazing things when given just a bad, bad hand, you know, you just, you got dealt a bad hand. It just is. And you can't go back and keep thinking about it and harping, harping on the fact that you got a bad hand. You got a bad hand. You're going to have to deal with it. And I think you talked about this earlier when you said, um, uh when you, some people would ask themselves, why me? Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. In 15, I had cancer. And so, mm. uh, and yeah, I mean, I, and I, it was actually a really dark point in my life before that. Because I was at, I was in that, that negative mindset where I was wondering, is it better if, I, you know, would it be better if I was gone? I mean, my family would be taken care of. You know, why am I making that much of a difference here? And so, like, and again, as, as veterans, we've already accepted our death. You know, it's kind of, we already know it's going to happen. Um, so I was kind of like, I'm ready. To, I mean, I'm always ready now. Forever come my day, I know I'm, I'm ready. But uh, for me, it was kind of like God told me, okay, well, if you want to go, here you go. Because I could have went. If I didn't do nothing about it, you, I, ha I had an out. And so, mm -hmm. but again, stick, going back to my training. My, my, my biggest thing that I tell all my comrades is stick to your training. I was trained to never give up. I, I don't, I was trained to fight. And so I stuck to my training and, uh, and, uh, pushed through and persevered through it. And it, it made a difference. Like just, uh, yeah, I mean, you, you're, you're, I don't know. For me, it was my training. I, I always, give back to my training and I get like talking back to or in mental health they try to they try to stop thinking like the military the military is what keeps me going that mindset is what keeps me going and pushes me through so you know I, I just stick to the way I think that way you know mm. yeah definitely serving right definitely on, changes a lot of us it changes a lot of us it for me it was uh, all positive stuff but I was some some hood kid from LA and California running around selling drugs. <laughs> I was a bad, I was a bad I was a bad person, man. <laughs> bad, bad person. Um so, so uh let's let's do some some closing thoughts. Like let, let's think and, and Rob, I want to start with you, brother. I wanna I wanna know. I want you to talk about why why are you doing this? Why why is it so important to come on uh, the first and last Wednesday of the month with people that have gone through some stuff that want to give back? 
Why is it so important to you? It's this is really uh, it, it's just my calling, brother. This is, you know, I pray all the time and God has kind of just uh, used me to do his works. You know, I, I ask God all the time, you know, uh, use me to do your works, God, whatever that may be, because, you know, some days I don't have a direction. I haven't had a direction for a long time. You know, being a veteran and, and stuff like that after getting out of the military, uh, you know, I haven't really had my direction. And so I kind of just pray to God and I ask God uh, <clears throat> to help lead me into doing uh, what he wants me to do, his will. And so uh, at the end of the day, helping people, you know, it has been I've been doing stuff with the homeless. I've been trying to do outreach with homeless people, uh, homeless veterans, uh, and now mental health. You know, I, I'm getting into mental health to try to help people who are dealing with mental health. And so, and just kind of pass on what was passed on to me, you know, because mm. a long time ago, a veteran reached out to me when I was homeless living in the streets. And uh, he talked to me and he gave me a chance at life again. You know, he, when I was having my darkest days, uh, a veteran reached out and he said, yeah, you know, you can go to the VA. You can get help at the VA. There's programs available. You can get homeless. You know, since Obama was president, Obama said no veteran uh, goes homeless. Mm. Oh, so, man. you know, there's no reason for any of us to be homeless at this point. Uh, <clears throat> and so. I got off the streets. I got I got into a, a program for mental health, and uh, and since I got out the program and stuff, I just kind of want to give back, man, and and and, uh, and pay it forward. You know, pay it forward yeah. to to yeah. other veterans and other people who, and so you know, online now is so big, we can kind of reach out to people online. You know, we don't have to worry about going in the streets. And, and trying to find our guys who need help. We can reach them online, in Messenger, on live, you know, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. We can be chatting to our other veterans and just letting them know where to get help, you know, or if they need a ride to the VA and where it is and what kind of programs are available. Because at the end of the day, a lot of veterans don't know what's available for them because there's programs out there, but they just don't know. I know about them. And so just yeah. a little bit uh, of help is all they need, you know, just maybe just a ride to the VA, you know, where they can get official help from a psychologist and stuff, you know, uh, <laughs> or maybe just a place to live, you know, for, 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 for a few nights or something. Uh, and so maybe they can get housing and stuff because I know housing is available. But also, you know, I wanted I wrote this uh, earlier, but. You know, God brings us down on our knees to humble us, to show us these tough times. It's with God and through God we will make it out of these times. So many times we try to do things on our own. We first need to ask God to protect us and guide us through our darkest days. Ask God to lift up our hearts, have mercy on our souls, bless our family and friends. Ask God to help us conquer our worst nightmares. We alone cannot and will not survive suicide on our own. The battle is real and God is the way. Amen. <clears throat> yeah. 100%. And you know what? I think, Rob, I think those words were speaking to Mark right then and there. I, I Mark, uh, you see his comments. He's struggling today. And um, Mark, you know, I hope those words, they, they, they seem like they should resonate with you. Rewind it back. Make sure that you listen to what Rob just said and make sure that you're you're seeking help. You're seeking professional help. Like there are there are trained people. I have a degree in psychology. I don't have a Ph.D., but I have a degree in psychology, a bachelor's. And uh, there are trained people that know the right way to help you. You know, the, the, the white the right words, the the right. I don't know, ear, shoulder, you know, we all need somebody to, to lean on sometimes. So talking about it, uh, Travis, like you said. Yeah, go I, got, I got something for Mark, and I'll tell Mark this, okay? 
God gives his toughest battles to his strongest soldiers, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, the guy battling suicide like Mark and every, everyone else is a tough battle, but you guys are soldiers and are God's strongest soldiers, you know? Mm -hmm. So, and that's, that's in the Bible, brother. You know, God gives his toughest battles to his strongest soldiers, you know? And so... This isn't an easy battle with suicide, but you guys are soldiers. All of us are, and we can do this, man. We can beat this, you yeah. know? And at yeah, the man. end of the day, we're stronger than suicide. We're stronger. We just got to get together and, and talk more. You know what? That's why I like this online live stuff. Stop talking behind closed doors. Come on out to our live group on two Wednesdays in a month, and let's talk about this. Let's solve suicide. Or, or at least help that number 22 go down to maybe, you know, 15, zero. you know, or less. Zero. And let's work, zero. yeah, let's work that number and hopefully get it down to zero. But uh, with, with nobody talking, uh, we're not going to solve the problem. You know, uh, there's too many guys that are getting lost in the system with no help. And that's a, that's a big issue, you know, too many veterans uh, on the streets, and, and no, and we need mobile vans in every city reaching out to our veterans with hot foods, with, with mobile psychiatrists. We ask, we need to go mobile in the streets, to be honest, because waiting for a guy to show up at the VA, he's, he's dead before he gets there sometimes. And it's a shame because they can't make it. People are crawling over to get to the VA, you know? Yeah trying to get yeah. help and it's not easy man it, it, it really isn't uh and anybody who's committed suicide man uh god god bless them and their family and uh <clears throat> and the ones that got help you know we're all at different points in in our life but the survivors like us the ones who made it through suicide you know we could just try to save our brothers man who who uh who might be contemplating suicide down the line or even contemplating it right now yeah i agree christine christine has, has a, a great great question uh do you have resources for families of veterans and how do we support our loved ones that's a that's an interesting for us question but the answer is yes but how do you how do you make it think somebody has a lot of noise in the background you guys Robert, think it's you. No, uh-uh. No? Okay. Uh, so, so, yeah, legislation makes a huge difference. So, you know, if you're engaging with your congressman, if you're engaging with um, local resources, VA resources, those, those resources make a huge difference. And, and money makes a difference. And so if you're investing money, if you're contributing money into local resources that helps veterans, uh, specifically even veteran suicide, those make a difference. Gomez, you said you have a, a list of things coming up, resources. Uh, for Chris, up. can you hear me? Okay, make sure my mic's on. Uh, for Christine, um, there's a program called uh, Fight the War Within. That uh, program was established by Miranda Briggs her husband was a ranger who uh, fell victim to suicide. And uh, so Fight the War Within, it, just Google them up, um, reach out to her. And again, uh, this is a direct spouse of a family member that lost her battle to suicide and left a child. So talking about that family support, she'll be able to help you out any way possible, give you direction. Um, the Fight the War Within was also the program that held uh, the suicide uh, prevention seminar in uh, Colleen, Texas. Uh, and again, uh, and also there's pro projectrollcall.org. So uh, I'm, a, I'm a board director on Project Roll Call. Project Roll Call is essentially, a, is, is a, is, it's a new program. It's starting off to become a hub. So if you go to this, the projectrollcall.org, uh, uh, there's resources there available for veterans, families, for TBIs, um, suicide prevention. Uh, we're they're there to honor our fallen heroes, honor our veterans that uh, fall victim to suicide. 
Um, going on to my events, again, my biggest thing is I, I, I travel across the country on a motorcycle, bringing awareness to a lot of our veteran issues. Um, so I leave this Friday. I'll be going to California on my way to Idaho, Boise, Idaho. Uh, April 17th is the Ride for 22. Um, it's the fifth annual event. Uh, Ride for 22 is a nonprofit organization out of uh, Boise, Idaho that is now becoming a national wide organization. And uh, so I'll be riding up there along with uh, Project Roll Call folks to uh, go, go bring awareness for these uh, uh, 22 veterans a day that succumb to their unseen injuries. And so uh, our biggest thing is to get out there and let people know about the resources. You know, again, uh, they don't know about like the Ride for 22. They don't know about Project Roll Call. I'm very proud and honored to be part of uh, Flags of Honor Escorts. Uh, my good buddy David McElroy just jumped on. I just saw him now. Um, but uh, we travel the United States with American flags uh, that go to various monuments, memorials, and different events. Um, oh, give me a sec. <clears throat> oh, so, okay. I'm currently in possession of the For the Fallen flag. This flag has over 35,000 miles documented since uh, May 1st of last year. It's been across wow. the country. It's been over the across the country, twice of the United what States. What an honor! It's what been, an honor. Yeah, and again, it's my honor to be a guardian. Uh, Flags of Honor escorts their Facebook program, but uh, this concept just started with uh, the idea of uh, escorting an American flag across the United States, and uh, and now we have over eight to ten flags that are traveling around, around the United States with different titles representing different programs and objectives that we're trying to bring awareness to. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, so again, it's my privilege to be um, uh, entrusted with this flag. And I'm trying to look at the, <laughs> and again, all the, all the great individuals we get to meet. Um, this May with Flags of Honor, we're doing the Legacy Escort. We ride from Los Angeles to Washington, D.C. to the Vietnam Wall, and then from the Vietnam Wall to the Middle East Conflicts Wall in Marseilles, Illinois. So, uh, and again, that's how this Flags of Honor escort program kind of started. We normally, every May, we do what's called Rump for the Wall. And that's the program that we ride from LA to DC. But because due to COVID, uh, we're, we, we're not able, the, the, event got, the event got canceled this year. But, because, but it's not an organized ride, but there are great patriotic Americans out there that are like-minded that are, will be riding from Los Angeles all the way across to DC and uh, various groups. Uh, we, we depart May 19th on that one, and we will be in uh, Washington, D.C. for M Memorial Day, and then we ride out. So it's a just lot cool. Of, a lot uh, of good stuff, brother. A lot of, I mean, yeah. it sounds like you're involved with every organization out there. <laughs> yeah, with, I mean, and, that, and, that's, and that's the key. Again, resources. Again, I, I, I emphasize the American Legion. You know, they're, they're, they're a great program, a lot of resources. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, like I told Mark earlier as well, do I do a lot of lives as well. Patriot Guard. You can sign up to be a Patriot Guard member. You want an easy step to, to start get you, get your foot in the door to start helping yourself and helping others, join the Patriot Guard. It's free to sign up. They send you an email that lets you know when there's a veteran funeral. You go to the veteran funeral, you stand there with an American flag, and you send your brother or sister off you know the best way you can letting them know that you're thankful for their service and you don't mm -hmm. have to be a veteran to do this anybody can do this you don't have to own a motorcycle you can go up in your car and again it's that surrounding yourself with these great like-minded individuals you know run for the yeah. wall um dav paralyzed veterans of america i mean there's so many organizations out there that there are people that care they really are are and just find yeah. them yeah a lot of a lot of resources a lot of things and i think i think the key to all of that is just go go and try do seek you you gotta you, you gotta get out of your house off of your ass and try and do and seek you have to you deserve it the people that love you deserve the best version possible of you travis i want i want to uh, go to you for some uh, parting words, you're. Uh, I put, there you go. Oh, I put you on. I put you on mute. Sorry, brother. Can you unmute? There. We go. Oh. oh. 
I think you just read it. Oh, there we go. There you go. There you go. Playing, <laughs> Magi magical chairs with the <laughs> So, yeah, I want to come to you with some parting words, man. If you can, if you can leave uh, just just a few words in someone's mind, man, like just to think about, just to think about if they're if they're depressed, if they're going through, if they're just kind of tired. What what can you say to them? to think about well to, for one never give up you know never stop and just never give up um that regardless of whatever situation you're in now this is only you know what i mean this situation this moment is just temporary and i always see we have we have what's gonna ha what's gonna happen in the uh, future right we have no clue um mm -hmm. But like, uh, I don't know how I don't know how to put this. I hear you, brother. It it will always it will get better. It will. You know, we always when we're in our moment, when we're in our feelings, and when we and we think this is like this is just the worst that it's going to get, and we just get that like down, deep down like lonely, just awful feeling. It, it's just in this moment, you know, and we have no idea. Tomorrow, something miraculous could happen, and you know, if 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 you if you give if you give up, you will never know. I mean, you know, and so and so, I always tell, I give up, just to keep push, to keep pushing, and you know, I can't guarantee things will get things will get better, but chances are will get get better. So, I thank agree. you for sharing, brother. Thank you, Travis. You're an inspiration, Travis. Inspiration to me. And an inspiration, I'm sure, to everybody watching. Yeah, thank you definitely. for coming, coming on the show, Travis. Thank you. Yeah, thank you guys both for being here. Uh, I appreciate you both. Uh, I'm sure a lot of other people are appreciating you guys. John, I see you out there. Mark, thanks for being part of the family. David, thank you for being part of the family. Christine, I'm glad you got uh, the answer that you were looking for. Um, it, Action makes a difference. So you can't you can't just sit back and pretend like tomorrow is going to be a different day if you do nothing today. Again, isn't and that so, the isn't that the definition uh, of insanity? <laughs> it is. Uh, With that, we will go to Rob for a uh, for a closing prayer and end out uh, the session. It was great connecting with you guys. Seriously, thank, thank you, you guys for having me on. I appreciate it. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> to quench our deepest thirst, uh, after his Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished, that the scriptures might be fulfilled, said, I thirst. Uh, also, this is a human physical cry. Jesus has still repeating Psalms 22. This brought to mind his own burning thirst. My tongue clings to my jaws. He knew deep physical pain and anguish. His thirst is indicative that the hard sketching of the tissues of his body under the heat of his merciless Middle East sun was having its full effect. His cry of thirst was a cry of some physical relief in the midst of the suffering. Jesus thirst physically, not only a share or lot, but so that he might thirst much more profoundly. He said that the true joy would be found only by those who thirst, express the dominant desire for righteousness. Jesus alone can satisfy the spiritual thirst within us. Only fellowship with him can quench our deep inner needs for security, love, and purpose. On the cross, Jesus thirsts for our thirst, yearned for our yearnings, and wanted us to want him more than anything else. Amen. 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 Thank you, brother. Thank you, gentlemen, for being here with us. I'm sure that your stories, your words, and your energy has impacted one or one million people today. All right? All right. Thanks, everybody, awesome. for being here. Thank you. Ciao, ciao. Oh. All right. All right. Oh. 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 <laughs> In the Air Force way, who I